Hi, my name is Lushan and I'm an online tutor of math and physics. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about FRQ number 4 of uh, AP Pre-Calculus Simple Exam issued by College Board. So let's read this one. Uh, the functions f and g or g and f actually are given by g is some function of log and h is some trigonometric function. So we're going to rewrite gx as a single natural logarithm without negative exponents in any part of the expression and your answer should be of the form ln some expression so this um, question is pretty much based on you know just using the properties of logarithm and you know simplifying that up so uh, let me write that up uh, the expression is uh, talking about a1 uh, all right, so the expression is gx is equal to 3 natural log of x minus 1 over 2 natural log of x. The property of uh, the natural log says that if there is a coefficient or a constant rather sitting outside the natural log, then you can just move it to the power of the variable. So this can be written as ln x cube and likewise uh, this, uh, this constant, this coefficient can again be moved to the power of x. So that's going to look like ln x raised to 1 over 2. Then we have a very good property of the log, the subtraction of log that if you have log a minus log of b, then that is, a, that is essentially equal to log of a over b. This is how we write as a second step. And finally, we have, since they, you know, they need only single expression, so we can definitely club these two expressions or perhaps simplify these two expressions because the base is same. If you notice carefully, the base of both these exponents is x and the power and definitely they are in a division. So when such a case happens, the power gets subtracted. So this is going to look like x raised to 3 minus 1 half and we know that 3 minus 1 half will be 3 times 6, 5, 5 over 2. I hope it makes sense about uh, the 3 minus 1 over 2 part. Uh, if not, I can show it separately here. Uh, for 3 minus 1 over 2, you got to make the denominators common. So I multiplied this 3 with 2 and divided by 2 as well. So I multiplied with 2 and I divided by 2 so that they have a common denominator. Uh, so the new numerator will be 6. So this will be 6 over 2 minus 1 over 2 and since the denominator is common now I can just you know subtract 6 and 1 so that this that is going to be 5 over 2. That's the final answer which we have. Uh, okay so this is what the part A says. Yeah that's correct absolutely uh, the part b or uh, yeah the subpart b of uh, question uh, in fact subpart 2 of part a says that rewrite hx as an expression in which cos x appears once and no other trigonometric functions are involved so they just want cos to be one of the function all right so let me make a replica of this and uh, uh, go over to the next page so uh, let's talk about this one okay in part two now we want to rewrite everything only in terms of cosine that should appear that too should appear only once uh, so i think in this case what we can do is uh, first i'm going to rewrite the expression h of x is equal to sine square x minus one over cos x so um, uh, remember that identity the trigonometric identity uh, involving sine and cosine because that's what we are going to do since we need to eliminate sine over here so we know that sine square x plus cos square x is equal to one as per the um, to the pythagorean identity so uh, we are looking to eliminate sine so uh, we are just going to write sine square x as 1 minus cos square x. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to replace this sine square x with 1 minus cos square x. I hope it makes sense. This sine square x is being replaced with 1 minus cos square x. And this minus 1 just remains as it is over cos x. 
so if we just open up the parentheses, you know, so that's going to look like 1 minus cos square x minus 1 over cos x. Unfortunately, uh, this 1 and negative 1 is gone. So what are we left with over here? Let me just separate my work. Uh, let me move this a little bit over on the right. Okay. So uh, what we are left with now uh, will be... <clears throat> A minus cos square x over cos x and obviously cos square x over cos x means one of the cos x will be gone and the final expression is just negative cosine of x yeah hope this makes sense that is our final answer uh, there's a there's some uh, there are some other parts associated with this question as well so let's talk about this one uh, the functions j and k are given by this so we need to solve for uh, when jx is 0 for the values of x in the interval of 0 to pi over 2. That's part number 1 of b. So let's do that. Uh, by the way, the calculator is indeed allowed, so feel free to use it. This is from part b. Uh, so jx is equal to 0 means 2 sine x cos x minus cos x is equal to 0 because this is what j is, right? This is what j is. I just wrote j right over here. So um, how can we do this? In fact, I'm just going to take cosine x as a common factor and I'm going to write this as 2 sine x minus 1 is equal to 0, uh, which gives us two possibilities because this is a zero product property. So this means that either the cosine of x is 0, which, is, which can be seen right here, or the 2 sine x minus 1 is equal to 0. Cosine is 0 when x is pi over 2 and we have to just keep in mind that this is the only region when we are uh, which we are targeting uh, Feel free to again use calculator if you cannot do it manually uh, Here if we isolate sine x then sine x is going to be one half and from here I know that this is going to be 30 degrees or pi over 6 uh, so these are the two possibilities only two values only two solutions where um, uh, this thing happens, right? Jx will be equal to zero. Now, if we talk about part two, the part two says that we have to solve for when kx is equal to 3e. So kx is equal to 3e, uh, which would mean that the value of k, the function kx is 8 times e raised to 3x minus e is equal to 3e. Adding uh, e both the sides, we have uh, 8 times e raised to 3x is equal to 4e. Um, I think I can just, you know, divide both sides with 8. So e raised to 3x will be equal to 4e over 8. And I believe that this will just be, you know, I got to use a calculator here. So if I end up using a calculator, uh, okay, I think they need the exact value that was in the instructions was yeah exact value okay so exact value can uh, can be obtained without using a calculator okay so it means that they don't want us to use the calculator so that's fine uh, we won't use a calculator so what we can do is we can take uh, first off we can just do 4 over 8 which can be just written as 1 over 2 so it's just e over 2 I'm gonna make myself some space over here uh, so this becomes e raised to 3x is equal to e over 2 and obviously if I want to get the value of x I'm just going to take the natural log on both the sides. So natural log of e raised to 3x is equal to natural log of e over 2 uh, which means that you know this 3x just drops outside because as per the property of the log uh, whatever is in the power of the inside guy just drops outside. So this is 3x ln e. And what is log of a over b? That's log of a minus log of b. So this will become 3x and ln e is just 1. So I'm just going to, you know, just ignore the ln e. Here I'm going to write ln e as 1. Uh, and this is 1 minus natural log of 2. And finally, 
Uh, let me just separate my work here. So finally, uh, the value of x comes out as if we just divide both sides with 3. So the value of x comes out as 1 minus natural log of 2 over 3, which is the final answer. Yeah. I hope uh, this one makes sense. Uh, so this was about the, uh, you know, the uh, part B. Let's talk about part C now. So uh, let me just create a replica of this over on the next page okay so part c talks about that um, uh, the function m is given by this so file all the input values in the domain of m that yield an output value of 9 over 2 so they want that cos of 2x plus 4 should be equal to 9 over 2 so if this is 9 over 2 this means that we just we're just going to subtract 4 both the sides so that's going to be 9 over 2 minus 4 so if we write 9 over 2 minus 4 that's going to be equal to uh, you know it's just making the common denominator of 4 so it will become 8 over 2 because we multiply by 2 and divide by 2 so 8 over 9 over 2 minus 8 over 2 is just 1 over 2 so this comes out as 1 half and uh, uh, this is what we have so uh, when is cos 2x 1 over 2 that's the only question which we have so uh, since they are not writing us uh, uh, any range in which we need to answer so this means that we have to give them a general solution because they are saying all the input values in the domain so how do we find a general solution of such a situation so remember that cos is 1 over 2 uh, we have to look in the 360 degree or the 2 pi uh, or the unit circle only when the angle is in quadrant 1 which is pi over 3 because cos 60 is 1 over 2 and pi over 3 is 60 degree so one of the value of 2x can be um, pi over 3 and the other value of x can be I'm just going to make some space here let me write this here uh, and the other value can be in fourth quadrant so in fourth quadrant the value will be 2 pi minus pi over 3 it's just about swinging the angles this is an entirely you know this is a concept if you feel like you don't know this just uh, a comment uh, on, on this video i'll make sure to make perhaps another video on that particular section so this is 2 pi minus pi over 3 which is uh, 5 pi over 3 right 5 pi over 3 but this is not the end because this is these are just the solutions of uh, the the 2 pi uh, region if we want to find a general solution we just add 2 and pi to both of them because as soon as we add 2 and pi to both of them it ensures that all the possibilities are taken into account so um, all we have to do let me just separate my work over here so all we have to do now is um, uh, just uh, divide both sides with 2 to get our final answer so the value of x is going to be pi over 6 plus n pi where n is of course an integer so this is one of the solution and over here if we divide both sides with 2 uh, this will become 5 pi over 6 plus n pi over here this is the other solution right i hope uh, this effort you also makes sense uh, uh, if there are any questions please post it in the comment section and uh, i'll uh, soon make some videos on the multiple choice questions on ap pre-calculus so i'll see you there bye bye